Now we're going to set up our film onto our job to set up the exposure process. So we're going to take this screen out of our drying rack and this is going to be done also in a light safe environment. So one thing you have to keep in mind is that you always want to put your film on the outside of the flat side of the screen. Well, also one thing is that we have to reverse the film so it reads backwards. Right now if we were going to print this it would actually show up backwards on the shirt. So on the screen we just simply have to reverse the film so it looks backward to us. However, on the shirt, it's going to come out the right way. You also want to work, if you're doing a multiple color job, if you're doing a single color job, it doesn't matter. But if you're doing a multiple color job, you want to make sure that all your films are the same size. So that way, you can measure, when you're setting your job up, you can measure off your screen to make sure that your films go in approximately the exact same place on each screen. So you want to make sure that your screens are all the same dimensions and your films are all the same dimensions. Okay, another thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a T-square or some type of ruler to measure the process so you make sure to get the measurements right on each screen for a multiple color job. For a single color job, you basically have a couple places to put single color jobs on a screen. If you are doing a center print, your, screen, your print's normally going to go towards the center of the screen a little bit on the higher side. So this is going to be just a center chest print. This is a multiple color design, but it would work the same way for a single color design. A center chest print, um, we're going to put it, oh, probably, let's see here. The actual image is going to start about six inches down. But this is going to be compared to your press, too. So you want to make sure that uh, I've, I used to on, uh, take a blank screen and put, the, put my shirt, take my transparency to my shirt, put it onto the press, put a blank screen down over that, and then just mark on the blank screen where the edges of the transparency are. So that way when I come to expose it, I can put the transparencies on the ready to expose screens in the roughly the same spot. That way we know it's going to line up on our press. That, that's with your very, very more standard and basic presses. Most of the presses have either micro-registration, which allow you to adjust and move around the screen, um, and the palette slide back and forth. But that is something to keep in mind if you have definitely a homemade press or a basic press that, that doesn't give you the luxury of sliding the palette back and forth and micro-registration. So you want to make sure that your job is lined up onto the press itself rather than just lining up on the screen. Now the presses that we're using, they both, the palettes slide back and forth and the press that is going to be printing this job has micro-registration, joystick micro-registration, so it's not going to be as critical, but you do want to make sure that all your films get in the same spot on each screen. And you also want to make sure that they're level and square to the screen itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, this film is fairly easy to use because it is a larger film, so we don't have to measure. We can almost eye up on the screen itself, and we can see, yeah, this film is pretty much centered. So once you center the film just by eye, you want to come tape off just one edge of the screen, and that way it gives you the ability to actually measure down. And you want to measure to your registration marks if it's a multiple color job because the registration marks are on the same spot corresponding to each image. So you want to measure to your registration marks. This is going to give us let's see, 4 to a little bit under 10 inches. That would be about, about 6 inches there on that side. We want to make sure it gets on the same spot on this side of the screen. So once we have it lined up, we're going to move it just up a hair tad so it lines up in the same spot. Once it's there, you want to hold it down with one finger. Come get some scotch tape. And tape this side down once it's registered. Then you also want to do the same thing to the size of your screens. Then you're just going to want to take 
some paper, and you're going to want to write down your measurements so that when you come to measure the next screen, you know it's going to be okay. From the top of the screen, we are six inches down. So write top six inches down. And then your left registration mark is one, two, three, three and a half inches. Left, re left registration mark, 3.5. And then your right registration mark is one, two, three, three and a quarter. So that way, we can set up each film and just measure off those registration marks, and they're going to be in the same spot on each film. Now, if you're doing like a left chest print or a sleeve print, you're going to want to make sure that you measure off your screen accordingly. Like a left chest print is going to go on the right, the left side of this screen. So when it comes in prints, imagine printing a left chest print, it's going to be on this side of the screen. So it prints on, and that's a good way to do it. Take the screen, put it on yourself as you'd be printing it. That would be a good way to do that. So once we got this job set up, we're going to go and expose it. We're going to show two different types of exposure right now. Um, and once again, this is all done in the light safe room. Every part of this process is done in a light safe environment until after the screen is washed out and dried. After the screen is washed out and dried, you can expose it to UV rays. But this is all going to be done in a light safe room using this light safe yellow bulb. So you can see what you're doing. All right, let's go and start exposing. The first way we're going to expose the screen is by using our more basic and more beginner exposure stand with a 500 watt halogen light. Now let me go over the basics of this setup. If you don't have a stand, you can go buy a 500 watt halogen light at Home Depot or whatnot if you just purchase the light with your kit and not the stand. Um, you basically want to set up a light and the stand is the same way, but set up a light about 16 to 18 inches above the screen. Now this is an above exposure system, so we're shooting down onto the flat part of the screen. A couple bad things about the 500 watt halogen light, you can expose your basic text images, your uh, logos, your cartoon, basically anything using a 110 or 155, maybe up to a 200, maybe 230 mesh screen. The thing is, is the 500 watt halogen lights are very, very hot lights so that they tend to bake the emulsion if you're exposing very fine detail. So you only want to use this light for your basic text designs, logos, and stuff like that on the lower meshes. The exposure time with this light on a 110 mesh screen is between 12 and a half minutes and 13 minutes. Now, different screen meshes hold different sizes of um, different amounts of emulsion like we were talking about earlier. So that a 230 mesh screen is going to hold less emulsion. That means it exposes in a less amount of time. So exposing a 230 mesh screen with this, you'd probably expose about 12 minutes flat or maybe 11 minutes 30 seconds. With this system, you also only want to use the dual cure emulsion. If you try exposing a pre-sensitized photopolymer emulsion with this system, with this basic exposure 501 halogen light, it's not going to work because it's not high enough light. It's not exact enough light to expose that screen in an amount of time. This also does not have a timer on it, so you're just going to have to simply plug in and unplug at the end of your exposure time. Definitely recommend getting like some type of stopwatch or timer so that, that once the time rings, you can come over here and you can unplug it.